Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Zen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a classic tangle called Mooka. This was created by the Zentangle crew, the Zentangle company, and it's one of their very first tangles and it's beautiful. So today I'm using a two inch by two inch Zentangle brand tile called the Bijou. I'm using a Micron PN plastic nib pen. I have a Zentangle brand graphite pencil for drawing and shading and a blending tool called a Tortillon. Today I also have a piece of scrap paper so that I can show you some of the variations before we get started. Okay, I'm gonna start with my pen. So Mooka has, if you Google Mooka, if you look it up on the internet or Pinterest, there's so many beautiful ways to make this. So one of the ways is to come up, curve, and come down. That's the essence of Mooka. It's just this little strand, frond, stem kind of a thing. So another way is to make that top part a little bit wider. Another way is to make it a circle and then come down. And it's up to you if you wanna close it at the end or keep it open. So similar to that is that same curve and circle. But at the top here, I didn't leave much room, but at the top we put a little cap and then come down. So it just gives it a little bit different look. I'll do that one again. Circle and then a little cap and then come down just kind of jumps up a little bit instead of being so um, tight there. It gives a little bit of a bump. We can also curve this line. Like that. And I believe when Mooka was first started, it was done in a way that when you got to the bottom, you just continued up and made another one and another and another. So anyway, those are all the different ways. So pick your favorite, play around with a little bit, see what you like, and we'll get started. All right, so I've got my little two inch tile here. Set that down. And for this one, I'm actually going to turn it and I'm going to make this the bottom of the tile. So we're gonna make it at an angle. And when we're done, we can still turn it back if you'd like, or it can stay this way. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going up this left-hand side here and putting in a little circle, maybe about the size of, probably a little bit bigger than the end of my pen. So I'm gonna start down here. I go up here. Make my little circle, very carefully come down. I'm gonna bring mine to a point. Now we're just gonna continue making these shapes. There's really no right or wrong way to make them. So I'm gonna go up this way, but I'm gonna come in a little bit so that I can put another one out here later. And I'm gonna go way up Make that up there. And I can do that little bump if I want and slowly, carefully come down to that point. So I'm going to do a couple more. So this one I'm going to curve and let it come out of the side over here. So I'm just going to come like this. I'm going to lift up my pen and come out the other side. Come back down. So 
So now it's just a matter of, of playing around and deciding where you want to put these. I think I'm going to put one right here, kind of like the letter S coming up the middle. And I guess I did my S backwards. Not on purpose, but that's okay. So now I need to intentionally, ch intentionally change the size of my circular tops. So I'm going to do one this way. And I like when they touch each other or when they overlap. I'm going to do one right there. And over there. Again, just play around, see where you'd like to put these. I think I'm going to try to put in at least one more and then I might be done. So I'm going to go up like this and imagine it coming out over here. Coming around here. So it's a little bit tricky, but I like that depth of how that one is behind another one. I wish I had done a couple more like that, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to stop right there. And before I go on, I'm going to add some little reflections. So just to round these out a little bit, I'm just going to put some lines following those curves. Just adds a little something extra. I've already made about 50 videos in this series, and I'm not sure why I haven't done Mooka yet. I guess um, it's a little bit tricky to get used to and a little bit tricky to find the Mooka that works for you. So I've never done it, but I use it a lot in my tangles at home. It's one of my go-to tangles. Okay, now that I've got all my Mooka in, we've got a couple of options. So I like to add orbs, and I like to put them in these little v-shaped areas and sometimes I'll even darken that area in like that just adding a few of these changes the whole picture I'm gonna put one up here and they can be large or small Tuck one in there. And I could even put multiple if I wanted to. So maybe I'll add them going all the way down into that shape. And I can darken in those extra areas. I'm going to sneak one right in here between these. So, you know, the one thing about these tangles is that anybody looking at these has no idea what you're drawing and they don't know how it's supposed to look. So you really can do anything you want on these and they turn out amazing. So in these areas in here, if you want to play around with maybe adding just some little lines. It's not meant to represent anything. It's just... Filling in spaces. I kind of like that. All right, before I add anything else, I'm going to add an aura, which is just an outline around the outside of this whole piece. So I like adding auras because I'm forced to slow down and focus and breathe. 
turning my tile as I go. This one extra step adds so much to our little piece. And if yours goes off the edge of the paper, wonderful. Let it go. Once I outline it, I have the option to do the aura on the inside, which I'm going to show you. Like that. Again, you don't have to do this, but you can. I'm going to add an orb in here. I like darkening a few areas. I'm going to add an orb up in here. And maybe for this one, I'm just going to aura the circle just to show you something different. I just aura that little orb coming out like that. I could do the same thing on this one. It's so much fun just to fill in these spaces. In these areas here, you could darken them and turn them all black. You could add some striping, or you could just leave them blank. So I'm gonna aura a few more spaces and then decide what to do. I think this one here I'm going to darken. This one I'm going to darken. Just do what feels good to you. I'm going to darken these. I just enjoy that contrast. Take your time filling these areas in. And then up here, I'm going to do some of that striping just to show you an idea. I'll do that on this one also. So that's it. That is Mooka. We filled it in, made it pretty busy. You can keep adding orbs, you can add more auras, you can add another mooka coming out somewhere. Again, this is not meant to look like anything specific, so just have fun with it. So I need to put our initials in before we shade it. So I'm going to put my initials down here. Then I'm going to grab my graphite pencil do a little bit of shading. So I'm going to start with these interior parts. And I'm just going to put some graphite on that inside edge. And then soften it just a little. I don't have to do the dark ones. But I'll put a little bit in these shapes. I'm just going to go around that mooka and do inside here and the inside of the one with the striping. Softening those just a little bit. Pushing them out towards the center of that area. So pretty. 
And then I'm going to take my pencil and add just a little bit on the opposite side of those reflections. And soften that a little bit. This gives those a little bit of a thicker look to them. They don't need much. Oops. If you'd like, you can add a little bit of shading to the outside. If you want to make that look like it's popping off the page a little bit, I'm just using my Tortillon that already has some graphite on it. There we go. There's our Mooka. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.